Welcome to The Extreme Underground, the show where I take a look at some of the most disturbing and controversial films in the world of cinema. Today we'll be talking about one of the most controversial, Necromantic. Directed by Jorg Budkarait, starring Bernd Aktari Lawrence and Beatrice Manowski. To quote the film's tagline, this is a film about love for a man and what remains of him. This is one of those movies that's always on the top disturbing lists alongside Cannibal Holocaust and a Serbian film. You're always gonna see necromantic kind of in that same discussion. So let's get into the breakdown. The opening shot is a woman pissing on the side of the road. She's going on a road trip with her boyfriend. They're looking at the map. The boyfriend, who's the driver, looks over to read the map and they get into a car accident. The woman is cut in half, her guts are hanging out, and the man is still in the car. He's dead as well with his eye hanging out. It looks pretty gnarly. Both of them have pretty great effects. During this sequence, we have some really great music as well. It's strings that is almost epic, but also tragic at the same time. It's pretty unique and I did enjoy that. We see this cleanup crew who in the IMDb synopsis suggests that this is like street sweepers, which is a completely different description as to what I would have said. I would call them just guys who work in the medical field that dispose of bodies after accidents. It's kind of like if there's roadkill, you got somebody from the town that comes and takes that stuff out. Anyway, this one guy, Rob, he shows up to the scene and he starts harvesting these organs, but nobody really cares nor really pays attention. And he brings them home to his apartment where you can see he's got shelves of different organs. So he drops in his little eyeball. He's got like a heart or something. He puts that into a jar and his girlfriend's there and she absolutely loves this. Betty is equally as fucked up as Rob is and uh, we'll get into more of that as the breakdown continues. I mean, even continuing right here, she's having a little bloodbath, which I'm also partial to, but she looks cool as hell just hanging out in her sunglasses, bathing in blood, while Rob's in the other room just watching a show where they're continuously talking about how people are just desensitized because of the video nasties, and there's kind of like a big tangent about like phobias and how to cure them and stuff like that. This is where we get into one of like the more disturbing moments, and it was like an oh fuck moment for me because I was like, oh, I don't want to see this. This guy catches his cute little bunny while he slices its neck. He holds it up and drains it of blood as the rabbit is still twitching because it's not dead. He's just draining it. And he eventually skins it and just like yanks like viciously on like the fur. And it was really hard to watch. It shows everything from the actual kill to the skinning, to the gutting of this rabbit. And then similar to kind of like Faces of Death style where they show you something real and then fake, they do the same thing here. We have the real bunny kill cut to a fake autopsy, just kind of for the sake of showing some extra gore. And then we go to a really random scene where we have this big guy coming out a hilariously tiny door and he's going apple picking. And then there's another guy just sitting there and he looks like he's been drinking a lot and he's trying to shoot some birds with like this weird looking gun and he ends up shooting the apple picker guy and killing him. He kind of like wheelbarrows him away and we can only assume that he dumped him in the river because the next shot, we see this medical team pulling the body out of the river and Rob just takes this whole body home. Like, I don't know how nobody is realizing like, hey, there's a, that body we just picked up, it's just missing but he takes it home. And this is basically like the end all be all for Betty. Betty loves this. She starts rubbing this body. It's all gooey and slimy because it's been sitting in water forever. And this is where we get into that title of necromantic. The body's on the bed and she pulls out like a piece of wood. She sticks it into the body, puts a condom on it and fucks the dead body. But not just her, Rob joins in on the fun as well. There's some DP with her as he like bangs her from behind while she's riding the corpse. And like one of the more gross parts, like the guy is licking and sucking and tonguing the eyeball that was in the socket of the dead body. And it looks fucking disgusting. And it's even worse because I watched the behind the scenes and York actually said like, no, this is a real eye, like a pig's eye. And because this eyeball was like so fresh, it was in formaldehyde and the guy said like he could taste it and he was sick afterwards, obviously, because they had to keep redoing the shot, but it was fucking gross. Got some really cool double exposure shots. I'm a big fan of these, so they're trying to do something artistic with this because uh, this is just, it's 
getting weird. I mean, it's already been weird, but they're trying to be a little bit more experimental with the camera work and stuff like that as well. It cuts to the beating of meat, not like that, but they're awkwardly trying to cook this massive steak in a really small pan. I don't know if this has anything to do with like dead people or if it's just like regular meat. It could be a part of like another corpse that we haven't seen yet. And the woman is drinking red wine, which also could just be blood. Whether it is or not, it's the symbolism of it. And we get to see what they've done with this body afterwards. It's not living in their bed. They've like nailed it to the wall and it's crying blood, which is kind of fucked. And speaking of fucked, Betty decides to read a book to the corpse just hanging out and then forces the corpse to eat her out somehow. I assume just grinding the skull into her got her off. And Rob is strange as well, like, I forgot to mention it, but earlier, like, the guys at work think he's kind of nuts. They, it doesn't really go into it. They just, like, think he's a loser. They don't really like him. And then he eventually gets fired. When he gets home, Betty isn't having it. She realizes that he can no longer provide for her, which not, is not the money, but it's, like, the dead bodies and the organs and stuff. And she's like, oh, you're just such a pathetic wimp. She completely emasculates him. She knows that this body is going to decay too much, and she needs a new one, and now he can't give that to her. So she she decides to just up and leave. She writes a little note and says like, peace out, takes her little corpse husband and hits the road. And now the man has like a cat. I don't know if the, he just picked this up or they already had it, but he decides to feed the heart to the cat. And then he puts the cat into a bag and smashes it against the wall that you can see the blood spray. And then he has a bath with the cat up above him as it's dripping blood into the tub. So he's enjoying his own little blood bath. And he decides to like hold his breath for a long time. I don't know if he was trying to kill himself or not then he reaches up and he grabs like the open stomach of the cat and rubs the cat guts all over his face and body obviously this is too much for him there's a lot of loss he decides to get out of the house go watch a movie so he goes and sees the slasher where they happen to be smoking and drinking which seems like the most obnoxious theater ever because i know when i drink i am so loud and having somebody like smoking in front of me and all over like this seems like the worst theater ever uh, people are getting aroused by the torture scenes, but obviously our man has seen worse than this. He just fucked a corpse the other night and he's been dealing with dead bodies like his whole life. So he's just like, I'm bored. I'm just gonna leave. This is ridiculous. See you later. Then we got this cool moon to skull transition, which I think kind of looks stupid, but we're now back at Rob's place. He's taking a bunch of pills, he's hammered, and we've got some like violin music playing as he tries to kill himself. And then it goes to another artsy shot where he's kind of like in this dream and it could be him dying. We don't know yet. He kind of wakes up looking like Darby Allen coming out of this like plastic bag. There's a gift of a corpse's head and he seems to be happy and he can kind of live a new life now. They play catch with the head. They're having a great time. So this is maybe heaven. He can play dead. He can play with the dead and you know, he's got a new girlfriend, but he wakes up so he's not dead and he goes to get a hooker. Instead of going back to his house like a normal person or to a hotel, he decides to go to a cemetery and have sex at a graveyard. And now he's probably hoping that he had some more pills, but of the blue variety, because he can't get it up. It's really awkward. The girl starts making fun of him. So he kills her, he chokes her out, and then he has sex with her dead body. He decides to just like spend the night and he just passes out. He's woken up by some guy who works in a graveyard, maybe like a grave digger or something. And he's shocked at what he's seeing. He drops his shovel and Rob picks up the shovel and decapitates this man, cutting his head clean in half horizontally. It looked pretty cool. There's blood spraying. It's a good practical effect. And then we've got another dream sequence of like a caterpillar watching birds fly, all types of weird stuff. He brings home like a cross with Jesus. Maybe he's trying to turn a new leaf. Maybe he's found God now. He's gonna change his ways. It shows, I don't know. It shows him running and jumping and all thrilled about maybe like the prospect of a new beginning or something like that. But then he decides to kill himself through seppuku. So he grabs a knife and he stabs himself right in the stomach while his dick gets erect and starts shooting cum all over the place, which eventually turns into blood. So he like was really turned on by death to the point that his own death was the ultimate gratification. So he's in complete ecstasy, just coming blood and cum all over. 
And then we see that bunny scene. This time it's reversed. It's going back and it's putting the bunny back together. Again, it's still fucking disgusting, but at least we see the cute bunny at the end. Rob is now dead. He's buried and his grave is being dug up by a woman we can only assume is his ex-girlfriend looking for a new body. I don't know if this film is speaking to me in some capacity about that whole being desensitized to things, but the fact that this was banned and is toted as one of the most disturbing movies of all time, I didn't think it was. Like it was kind of almost comical at times because of the dead body. Like the most disturbing part was like the rabbit scene, but the movie itself wasn't that gross. I don't know what that says about me, to be honest. Maybe it's because like I've seen necrophilia in other movies. I mean, this was done in the 80s. So at the time, I think it held a lot more weight. But the fact that I'm still seeing people talk about it on the daily now is really interesting to me. I don't quite see it. I can appreciate it. I think the cinematography, the music, and everything is really well done. And it is a trippy movie. It's not very long either. It's just over an hour. So I think for the curious, it is worth the watch but I didn't really find myself like thinking this was one of the most disturbing movies of all time. I can't see me putting this on any list of disturbing movies. I just don't get it. But I think that has to do with what people have actually seen because this is one of the more accessible movies to find when it comes to extreme or like banned movies. I assume that that's why it's on so many lists. Like we see Cannibal Holocaust, a Serbian film, Necromantic, 120 Days of Sodom or Solo, Martyrs Inside, the like. Like the subject matter is definitely disturbing, but I think the way that it's presented is almost too comical for me to be disturbed by it and many to be disturbed by it. If you just see these isolated scenes, it's like, yes, the concept and talking about like this guy killing himself while he comes and blood shooting everywhere. It sounds gross, but the movie itself doesn't portray it that way. I don't think it was shot well enough to make it seem disturbing. And I don't think that was the point either. I think it was shot intentionally to uh, make things feel like comfortable for people to show that these guys don't care about what they're doing. They're just obsessed with death. I am glad I watched it and I'm glad I'm making this video but it's still not a movie that I'll probably like watch again it doesn't really make sense like there are memorable scenes but, but it's not the best movie so I'm gonna give this two and a half awkward dances with a corpse out of five as always thank you for watching like this video and comment below with your thoughts on the film if you've seen it if you haven't and you do want to check it out links are in the description and if this is your first time here make sure you subscribe to the channel stay up to date with everything on the extreme underground